Hi, my name is Claire Ryan. I'm the coordinator of the Midwest Invasive Plant Network and the Woody Invasives of the Great Lakes or Wiggle Collaborative. This video is about the invasive tree Siberian elm, Ulmanus pomilla. I'll tell you briefly about this species history in North America, why it's invasive, and then we'll take a look at how to identify it in the field. Siberian elm is native to Northern and Central China, Mongolia, Siberia, and the Korean Peninsula. It was initially brought to North America for ornamental use in the mid 1800s, but planting really took off in rural areas in response to the Dust Bowl and other major erosion problems in the early 1900s. It is used, still used today as a windbreak, although the wood is not actually all that terribly strong. More recently, it's also been used as a replacement for native elms due to Dutch elm disease. It's used as genetic material for complex hybrids that are resistant to Dutch elm disease. Today, it occurs outside of cultivation in most of the United States and Canada, but for the far southeast. It invades open and disturbed habitats, including old fields, rights of way, riparian corridors like this one, prairies, and open woodlands. It can tolerate poor and sandy soil, but it's not shade tolerant, so you won't find it in a closed forest. It can become dominant in favored habitats due to ex its extensive seed production, and it can form thickets that exclude native species. There's also some concern over its hybridization with native species, particularly slippery elm, Ulmus rubra. Slippery elm is adapted to wetland and bottomland habitats, while in its native range, Siberian elm occurs primarily in dry and arid locations. Hybridization between the two may be allowing Siberian elm to adapt to more habitats in the Midwest and wetter areas as well. This may also be a conservation concern for slippery elm. So now let's take a look at how to identify Siberian elm and tell it apart from other elm species. At maturity, Siberian elm grows into a large tree up to 50 feet tall with a vase-shaped crown up to 40 feet across at its widest. Juvenile trees are often quite shrubby with low leafy branches. Its bark is light to medium gray, rough with irregular fissures on mature trees. And leaves are alternately arranged along the branches, elliptical in shape and relatively small with a maximum length of about three inches. On juveniles, the leaves will be very small, usually an inch or less. It has smaller leaves than most elm species, like American elm or slippery elm. The leaf edges are single toothed, while native elms typically have double toothed edges. The leaves are dark green and smooth on the top surface, while American elm in particular has very rough leaves. Siberian elm flowers are born in pink clusters in early spring before the leaves emerge. The fruits are flattened, round, papery capsules, each containing a single seed, and those fruits are dropped by the tree and dispersed by gravity and wind in the late spring. Siberian elm looks very similar to the non-native lace bark elm, which also has very small leaves. However, mature lace bark elm has interesting lace pattern bark, as the name implies. That species also flowers in the fall instead of the spring. But in the juvenile phase, it's very hard to tell these species apart, though neither one is desirable outside of cultivation. If you have Siberian elm on your property, we do recommend that you remove it, especially if it's growing in or near running water or within a thousand feet of another natural area. Siberian elm doesn't sucker from the roots, leaving more options available for management. Appropriate replacements for Siberian elm include Dutch elm disease resistant varieties of American elm or complex elm hybrids. To learn more about control techniques and alternatives to Siberian elm, check out our website at woodyinvasives.org and please subscribe to our channel for more useful videos like this one.